Continuing on with my last video, let me show you the technology that allowed even untrained people to evidence psychic ability in a laboratory setting. The technology that Dr. Persinger used on Swan and the students was called circumcerebral magnetic stimulation, meaning around the head. And the device itself was called the octopus, and I have one here. You all may have heard of the uh, Koran helmet or the God helmet that Persinger was known for uh, you know, many years ago. And this is not the same technology. It's similar, it does similar things, but this is something completely different. And this technology, uh, this is a thousand bucks, but I'm going to teach you how to build this, which does the same thing for about 30. So when Persinger was doing his research on SWAN, SWAN was doing active remote viewing sessions. So they had SWAN in a, uh, a deprivation chamber, uh, an acoustic chamber that blocked off outside stimulus, and they had him hooked up to an EEG, so they were measuring his brain waves, and they found a very distinctive pattern. When SWAN was in his active working state, he had 7 hertz spiking over his occipital lobes, the visual areas of the brain. This specific pattern is rare and very distinctive, and I have seen it time and time again when I do my own EEG readings. And what's more, Ingo Swan's drawings got more accurate when they were pulsing the octopus signal around his head. And as I mentioned in the last video, Persinger was able to block Ingo Swan's remote viewing ability by taking a frame with magnetic solenoids around it and pulsing a very similar signal through those solenoids uh, creating a magnetic barrier that Swan could not penetrate and couldn't see what was on the other side. Persinger also used the same approach on the untrained students, and they all had uh, positive hits, and some of them had accuracy rivaling Swan, which is very surprising. I also mentioned that the same approach was used not just to do remote viewing out to grab information and bring back to a brain, but also to connect two brains. So there were several different variations of that testing. First one had two people separated in different rooms. One of them was looking at a picture. The other one was able to tell what the picture was. Second one, two people separated apart. One of them imagines touching the other person, and the other person has a response like they are actually being touched. The next is something I mentioned in another video, that uh, they had two people separated. One of them had light flashed in their eyes, and the other one represented that light flashing in their EEG reading. These experiments weren't just run with one or two people. Um, I believe the first one had 44 participants, and they all had uh, significant results 